Hello, my name is Christian Renaud. I'm uh, one of the directors of PAFN, which is Pembroke Area Field Naturalist. And I'm going to talk to you about the ways we can identify the various species of sparrows. One of the most abundant species of sparrows we have is the song sparrow. We hear them, they are abundant, they sing all over the place, and they have a usually beautiful, uh, happy spring song, and uh, they're easily recognizable because they are dark brown. The males sing almost all the time. They have a few second, a song that lasts a few seconds, and they have a spotted breast, but a big spot in the middle of the breast, and they have streaks on the face. They have uh, sort of a white chin and uh, little bars all over the place, and uh, their cheery song is fairly easy to identify. The females are a bit paler. They look alike. Unfortunately, the song sparrow is not very easy to distinguish from the others if we're not aware because they have features that we are able to see in other sparrows. So uh, please bear with me and we'll try to compare other sparrow species and see what distinguishes them from the others. So the song sparrow, probably the easiest is this song and their appearance after a while you get to understand that they are fairly bigger, bigger than the average and uh, they are easy to see because they are abundant and common. Another species that look a bit like them is the, sw the swamp sparrow. Swamp sparrows are a bit smaller, they have streaks on the face as well, but they don't have the same whitish uh, and spotted breast that the others have. They have a grayish, grayish uh, chest and a bit of a spot too, but it's much paler. And you see them, as their name says, around swamps usually, or wetlands, uh, on the edge of a river sometimes. One species that we see abundantly in the winter is a tree sparrow, but they tend to disappear during the migration. At the end of April, usually we don't see them anymore. In mid-April, we still see them a bit, but at the end of April, we hardly see them at all. The song sparrow will appear maybe at the end of March, early April, so they sort of crisscross. But the tree sparrow can be seen all winter. It's one of the only species we see during the winter and would be fairly common, but mostly around bird feeders. We don't see them very much in the nature because they, there's not enough feed for them. Usually it would be around farms or bird feeders. And the tree sparrows are beautiful brown. They have a bit of a variegated back. They have sort of a brown crown and brown eye uh, lines. And their breast is a pale gray, but it has this funny spot right in the middle, a bit like the song sparrow, but it's not streaked except in the back. So they're fairly easy to identify. And the other feature that you can look for is the color of the beak. The beak of the tree sparrow is bicolor. It's yellow with lower mandible is yellow, and the upper mandible is dark. It's more like black. It's not quite black, but almost. Um, one species that we occasionally see in winter, but fairly rarely, is the white-throated sparrow. We see them more in the spring when the snow just left, they usually come up. And the males and females look a bit alike, but the females, females are duller. The males have a beautiful white uh, bib, if you want, and little lines that line, outline the bib. They have what we call lores, yellow lores. The lores are the part between the eye and the, the beak uh, on the top. And that part is yellow on the uh, white throated sparrow. They also have uh, a, a grayish body, uh, the belly, and the back is brownish. And uh, the easiest features to look for is the yellow lores, a bit of white behind the yellow lores, and the white bib, which is very conspicuous in the males. And if you look at the females, they still have the yellow lores, but it's not as conspicuous and the white on them is not as uh, seen as more like cream colored than uh, white. So uh, uh, the white throated sparrows are fairly easy to identify with their song. They tend to go <whistles> Another species you can hear scratching in the leaf litter in the forest but it's much harder to see and they don't sing very much is the fox sparrows. Fox sparrows are maybe the biggest piece of sparrows that we have around here. They have beautiful colors of uh, mostly uh, ruddy uh, brown to... Uh, uh, they have a white belly with a lot of streaks on it, on it and the back is usually ruddy with brown streaks on them. And um, the head has a part of it that is gray and on the shoulders as well. So they have uh, 
some mottled colors and a mix of colors and they have this beautiful song. The tail is usually ruf rufous and fairly long but unicolor and they are bigger than the other species so right there if we know the sizes of most other species this one is easy to distinguish because of that and I've never seen them anywhere else than at the forest bottoms. There's also other species that are abundant in the area. One of them is the chipping sparrow. We rarely see in the winter. Uh, they usually are south but once in a while there's a knot specimen that stays here for the winter and its appearance is very different in the winter. It looks more like a song sparrow in the winter or even a bit like a tree sparrow. But in the summer, the chipping sparrow is going to have a, a pale gray uh, belly and chest and will have um, a very prominent uh, streak across the eyes, a white band above it and then a brown top on the head. And they like to sing as well. They have this trippy uh, song, which is not very, very loud. It goes. It's a very boring song, but they sing very often, so they're easy to identify because of that song, and also very easy to see because if you hear them, they're around and they're not afraid of showing up near human beings. They like to go to feeders also in the spring during migration time. Another species that we see very often in the area is the savanna sparrow. They're quite abundant in farmers in farms. So if you drive along rows that are along farms, uh, savanna sparrows are going to sink quite often on fences or on posts. And uh, they look a bit like the song sparrows, so they can be very easily confused with them. But the song is so different that you know when you look at them carefully, you make a difference. They also have sort of yellowish lowers and they have a uh, muffled back and uh, gray abdomen. They have longer legs, pinkish legs. The field sparrow uh, can be very easily distinguished with its song and its features are hard to say because they are a mix of all kinds of other, uh, other types of sparrows, but they look a bit like the song sparrow if you're not careful. The Vesper Sparrow is another species that you don't see very often here. They have a beautiful song as well. They look a bit like the Song Sparrow, but they look a bit grayer. And they're not as conspicuous and they seem to be a bit more discreet. They seem to hide a little more. So Vesper Sparrows, as their song says, I mean, as the name says, you see them mostly at night. You hear them mostly singing at dusk or a bit before the late afternoon, early evening. This is when you start to hear them more. Unfortunately, the grasshopper sparrow is not a species that I've seen in the area. They're fairly rare and uh, they have a, a smaller body and they are very skittish. They are hard to see, but when they are seen, it's usually on bushes around in the edge of the of a field or on fences. Another species that is uh, interesting to see here in the area during migration is especially the white crown sparrow. The white crown sparrow have a beautiful song. There are species that live also in, uh, in the north and when they come in the area they like to come around feeders. They have this very conspicuous black bar just above the eyes and above that white that black bar they have this white band which is why we call it the white crown sparrow. They have a fairly uniform gray belly and uh, chest but their back has a very interesting motif, motif of brown and gray streaks and uh, their song is very beautiful. They have a pinkish bill as well and their song goes <whistles> and it's very light, it's beautiful and sometimes males will be uh, singing to one another as if they were challenging each other and they don't live here usually, they don't nest in our area so it's only during migration that we see them more easily I think in the spring than in the fall but we can see them in the fall as well they tend to go in places like parks and some fields but mostly places where they can find uh, seeds and they usually go to um, places around houses as well so this is why they are fairly easy to see